In this lecture, we're going to be looking at buffer solutions and how they work. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain how buffer solutions work and how they are made. You should also be able to use the relationship pH equals pKa minus log acid of a salt to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. Buffer solutions are very important in chemistry labs and also in the environment. So what are buffer solutions? Buffer solution, a buffer solution is one in which the pH remains approximately constant when small amounts of acid or base are added. For example, seawater is a buffered solution and it's slightly alkaline. And despite the fact that we've been dissolving lots of carbon dioxide into seawater over the last 50 years, as a result of uh, the combustion of fossil fuels, increasing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, and CO2 dissolves in water to give you an acidic solution. The pH of seawater has not changed much because it's a constant, it's a buffered system, and it would be disastrous if there was a big decrease in the pH of seawater. Uh, lots of systems within your body are also buffered. For example, blood is a buffered solution. And this is important because all the enzymes in our body are very uh, particular about what pH they'll work effectively at. And uh, the fact that the blood is a buffered system means it can cope with a small amount of acid or base impurities coming into contact with the system without allowing the pH to change and so the enzymes can still continue to work effectively. I do draw your attention to the fact that when says small amounts of acid or bases are added, it can't cope with an infinite amount of acid or base being added. So how do buffer systems work? Well, we'll look first of all at how an acidic buffer system works and then an alkaline buffer system. Right, to make an acid buffer, what you need is a solution of a weak acid and one of its salts. So let's give you an example. So We'll choose our favourite weak acid, uh, ethanoic acid. So it partially dissociates, you give H plus ions and, and the ethanoate ion. Now, if we add a small amount of an, a base to the system, the base will react with the H plus ions and remove them. Now, the ethanoic acid can replace those H plus ions because we've got a huge amount of the ethanoic acid molecules. Remember, very few of them actually dissociate. So if we remove some H plus ions, we can replace them by allowing more of the ethanoic acid molecules to dissociate. However, the system as it stands cannot cope with us adding more H plus ions. Okay. You could think that some of the ethanoic ions could react with H plus ions to remove them, but we've got so few of these in the system that uh, it wouldn't cope with much impurities. So that's where the salt comes in. So the salt of the acid, this is sodium ethanoate, fully dissociates because it's soluble in water, gives sodium ions and ethanoate ions. So we've got this large reservoir of ethanoate ions produced by the salt. So now, if we add excess acid to the system, the acid can be removed by the ethanoate ions provided by the salt, combining with H plus ions to produce more ethanoic acid molecules. So this buffered system can now cope with having more acid or more base added to it. So the important thing to remember is in this system we've got loads of the ethanoic acid molecules and we've got loads of the ethanoate ions produced from the salt. We have hardly any of these ethanoate ions produced by the molecule dissociation dissociating. So if hydrogen ions are removed by addition of base, the weak acid dissociates to provide more 
hydronium ions or H plus ions. Or if more hydrogen ions are added, then the conjugate base provided by the salt can remove them. So the thyroid ion combines with H plus ions to reduce ethanoic acid and water. So you will be expected to be able to explain this in detail. So make sure you are very clear of how this works. And if you're given the explanation, it's essential that you stress that the thyroid ions that are removing the excess hydronium ions are provided by the salt. You don't necessarily need to use the word conjugate base, but you need to make it make clear that the thyroid ions are provided by the salt. So that's how you make it an acidic buffer solution. Very same, similar idea if you want to make up a basic buffer system. You use a weak base and one of its salts. So for example, ammonia is our favourite weak base and one of its salts, say ammonium chloride. This partially dissociates, this completely ionises in water. So in this system, you've got loads of the NH3, okay, because very few of those molecules dissociate, and we've got loads of the NH4 plus provided by the salt. So if H plus or hydronium ions are added, uh, they will remove the OH minus ions, okay, and so the ammonia dissociates further to replace the OH minus ions. Whereas if OH minus ions are added, we want them to combine with NH4 plus ions to turn into ammonia plus water. But we haven't got many of these ammonium ions here. But we have a huge reservoir of ammonium ions provided by the salt, which can remove the excess OH minus ions. So they're very clever systems and they allow the systems to be buffered and we can keep them quite constant pH. Right, here's an example of a very common exam question. It says, which of the following would not be suitable as a buffer solution? So A, boric acid and sodium borate. B, nitric acid and sodium nitrate. C, benzoic acid and sodium benzoate, D, propanoic acid and sodium propanoate. Well, boric acid is a weak acid. How do I know that? You'll find it in your data booklet. So you'll find boric acid listed here. And we've got the sodium salt. So that would be suitable. So that's not the correct answer. Nitric acid and sodium nitrate. Well, nitric acid is not a weak acid, so that wouldn't be suitable. And the other two would be weak acid and its salt, propanoic acid, weak acid and its salt. So the answer would be B. Okay, quite often we want to know what the solution is buffered at. So we have to work out the pH of a buffer solution. So you're going to get another equation for working out pHs. Okay. So the pH of a buffer system is calculated by pKa minus log of the concentration of the acid over the concentration of the salt. So we've got three different uh, formula we can use for working out the pH of solutions. One for the pH of strong acids and alkalis one for weak acids and alkalis, and one for buffer solutions. But of course, you find all the equations on uh, page four of your data booklet. So you don't need to memorize them, you just need to remember what one is used for what purpose. Okay, so let's try an example using this. Okay, so a buffer contains a mixture of benzoic acid and sodium benzoate at concentrations of 0.1 and 0.4 respectively. Calculate the pH of the buffer. Okay, so the pH, the pKa minus log 
of the concentration of the acid over the concentration of the salt. Okay, so pKa, so that's the pKa of the weak acid, which is benzoic acid. So we look up our data booklet and find that it's 4.2, 4.20 in fact, minus the log of the concentration of the acid, which is 0.1 divided by 0.4. So that's 4.20 minus the log of 0 0.25, which is 4.20 minus log of 0.25 is negative 0 0.602. So 4.2 minus minus 0 0.6 because they're at 4.80. So this system would be buffered with a pH of 4.8. So, here's another one for you to try. A buffer contains a mixture of ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate at concentrations of 0.1 and 0.1 mole plate respectively. Calculate the pH of the buffer. Okay, so I suggest you stop the lecture, try that, and then I'll quickly run through the answer. Okay, here's a slightly harder question for you to try. A buffer solution is made by dissolving 2.76 grams of methanoic acid, HCOOH, and 5.44 grams of sodium methanoate, HCONA, in water. Calculate the pH of the buffer solution. Okay, just a couple of points to set you in the right direction before I leave you to do it yourself. So you you know the mass of eth methanoic acid and you've got its chemical formula so you work out how many moles of methanoic acid you've got and similarly you work out how many moles of sodium methanoate. Now you can't actually work out the concentration of either of the solutions because you're not told what volume it's dissolved in but since in the equation you dissolve the concentration of the acid by the concentration of the salt uh, the actual concentration isn't actually that important because they'll be in the same ratio as the number of moles of one to the other because they're both in the same volume you know they're both dissolved in say a litre of water so you'd be dissolving both you'd be dividing both numbers by one or whatever so they actually would cancel out so you can actually just do it as a mole ratio uh, you don't actually need to do it as a concentration so I'll leave you to try that yourself now So by now you should be able to explain how buffer solutions work and how they are made. You should also be able to use the relationship pH equals pKa minus log acid over salt to calculate the pH of buffer solutions.